All right, welcome to another tutorial video on Unreal Engine. Today, I'll be covering how to use the Quixel Megascan library using the Bridge plugin. This allows you to access Epic Games owned Quixel Megascans library, a library of content in which you can download very high resolution assets and scan from real world things such as rocks and trees and other things like that. And this will make your landscape scenes amazing. So today I'll be showing you how to do that exactly. So in your viewport, you might have something that you've imported in or created directly in here or maybe downloaded from the Unreal Engine store or whatever, or brought in from Rhino or SketchUp, whatever it might be. And in this case, I have this random high tech looking thing and I'm gonna use the Quixel Megascan bridge. So I have a tab called bridge up here, you may not. So you may wanna come up here to quickly add to a project and you can just click Quixel bridge. That's just gonna open up this tab. Yours might kind of be floating like this and I just kind of put it up here in the browser. Boom, boom, okay. And you might just see something that looks like this. This is the home page. You have surfaces, okay. These are things that you apply to an object as a texture, right? Um, it's not a 3D asset. Down here, you might see 3D models, right? You have some uh, barbecue, shish kebab type of stuff. You have some bricks, you have some grass, and then you have some themes. So anyway, I'm gonna jump in here into the Japanese tropical jungle. I'm not gonna explain, well, maybe I should explain how to look through this. There's 3D assets, okay, if we go here, see 3d assets um, so these are 3d objects okay and then if you come here you got 3d plants okay these are all types of plants and I'll show you how to how to utilize these in the video and then surfaces again these are just like what you might imagine in V-Ray as texture materials and then decals decals are super cool you can apply these as graphic on top of objects and I'll show you how to do that as well I'll go back to home and so they have some categories right Arctic Iceland probably all I see in my case, I am looking for Japanese tropical jungle. Okay, so if you see latest collections, you can kind of click on it and you'll see there's all types of things. Okay, so I'm going to Japanese tropical jungle. I already pre-downloaded some things, but just to explain right here, if I go to this mossy forest boulder, you'll see to the right, you will have the information about this. If I come scroll down, you'll notice that I have an option here to download different qualities. Now I'll say that I'm downloading this one object as a nanite. Nanite is the highest resolution in terms of this type of asset. And it's gonna give you something super high res, but it's gonna take up a lot of space and storage. I would recommend starting off probably staying in the medium to high quality range. They, they won't be as high resolution, but they're gonna save a ton on storage. So if you don't want your files to be like 50 gigabytes, I stay low for now, okay? Once you select your size, you just click download. I've already had mine downloaded and you need to be signed in, you need to have an Epic account. And if you have Unreal Engine, you have an Epic account, you just need to sign in here. So once you have it downloaded, you get this check mark and then you can click here to export Nanite or I'm just gonna add it right here. So I'm gonna click add and then give it a second. You'll notice that something popped up right here at the bottom of my content browser. What that's showing me is that it's downloading. You'll see at the bottom right hand corner, it is also importing the file. It might take a while to load up. So right now it just shows us as, as a brick. It's not actually showing the objects. If I drag it over, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't actually even have a texture right now. It's still importing that in. You can see it's still preparing the shaders. Give it a little bit for it to fully load in there. And now that there's nothing down here, it seems like it fully loaded up. What you have down here is you have uh, the texture channels, okay, that is built into this texture material. And this object has this texture material on it. In our details, this details explains what's going on with the specific object selected. So you'll notice the material has this MI Mossy Forest Boulder. That is this thing right here. So if I was to switch it, obviously this would change, but this is mapped to this object. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily change it. Let me go ahead and slow down my camera so I can move around properly. So I could zoom in and I could see, okay, this has quite a bit of detail. I think uh, it looks uh, quite nice. I could change my lighting, holding control L, moving my mouse. Okay, that's fine. Now, where the heck are these things saved? So you notice that this is similar to your Windows Explorer. You'll see the subfolders within another folder. So if I go back one folder to 3D assets, one folder out is Megascans. Okay, and then inside Megascans is 3D assets. Remember there was 3D assets, surfaces, decals, whatnot. It's organizing in that category. This is automatically made once you import it in. If I go back one to the meta folder, which is content, you'll notice that we have our level that I've explained in the previous video. And then Megascans is what was created when you use Bridge and you import something from the Megascans library. So once you import any object, you're gonna get this. Now, after you add the one object, so if I come back up here and I want to bring in this forest rock, add it. Now it won't automatically jump into that folder like it did previously. It only happens the first time. So you need to go into the Megascans, 3D assets, 
and now you have this forest rocky ground, okay? So you just have to keep track of what you're downloading if you drag it in. What we're gonna do is just bring in a few more assets. As I was placing the objects in the assets, I noticed I really didn't like the collection. So I ended up changing it to the Zurich Shrublands. They just have a lot of rocks in. I, I, you know, just rocks look nice in Unreal Engine. So I'm just, I'm just using rocks. Okay, so if you come in here, I've kind of check marked few of these big boulders I wouldn't use these some of the large to medium to small I've kind of used some of these sandstone rocky surfaces sandy rock stone that's a pretty good one anyway I just kind of downloaded a few where you see I check marked and I downloaded this sandy gravel we'll see if we can use that if I wanted to add a texture on this object if I go to mega scans I downloaded the sandy gravel I'm just gonna go ahead and place this on the landscape material, I should just note that I selected this object, this landscape, select it right here. You'll see there's a boundary selection. And then in the detail, you'll notice that over here, where is it? Landscape material, there's nothing on it. If I just drag this circle sphere onto it, you'll see that it changes. Now it's very repetitive, that doesn't matter. That's like for the distance, it's just giving me color. All of this is gonna be replaced with my assets, okay? From the mega scan. So, I've downloaded a few of these objects and I just placed it in. You'll notice that they come in at different sizes. Okay, so you can see they're different colors, different sizes, doesn't matter. It's not what I'm uh, concerned about here. All that could be adjusted. All I'm concerned about is collectively adding these objects to make a scene. So I can go ahead and Alt move these things. Now, as I said before, you'll notice that all these things are just added in that line. If I want all these in an object uh, folder, if I just select all these objects, actually, I don't want these things selected. Unselect that. I think I selected all the assets. Okay. And then I just come here and click create new folder. Now it's all under a new folder over here. And I'm gonna call this rocks or something. Just call it rocks. So now this is all under rocks. If I turn it off, all the rocks get turned off. All right. And now I'm going to set this as make current folder. So every time I duplicate this thing, it gets duplicated. You'll see that it's getting duplicated under this folder. So again, if I go ahead and I turn off the rocks folder, everything turns off. Go ahead and start scaling these things. I'm just clicking Alt to duplicate it. And then now I'm gonna go click R and I'm just gonna change the scale. Maybe I can go ahead, click E, rotate this. So it doesn't feel super repetitive. I mean, it is gonna be repetitive if you're using the same object over and over and over again. Again, I'm just being quick here just to kind of show you how you'd start filling this in. This works well if you're just creating a scene, right? Just like this, where you're just gonna fill in everything that you see in your frame. So set up your camera and then fill it out. Now, if you are gonna have an animation, just be sure to cover it. But you can see like, if I start moving around, I'm gonna see all these other things I'm not taking care of. And I'm gonna use these big rocks here to start blocking out everything that I haven't modeled, okay? And so I'm just gonna really try to create a controlled scene. In a future video, I do wanna cover how to do this procedurally. It's much, much quicker. Right now, I just wanna show you the basics, the manual way of doing it, like fully controlled by your hand if you wanna call this artistic, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and focus on some of these bigger rocks. So this one right here, I'm just gonna move it to, let's say something like that, put it in the ground. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate it by clicking Alt, rotate. I'm gonna make it slightly bigger, push it back. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna push it in the front like this. And so right now I'm just basically covering the backside. So I'm not seeing any of those hills in the background we have. This thing, I might make it slightly larger, push it in the back, grab this guy, let's rotate, rotate, okay. Move, now I know the colors are totally off, but that's fine. That happens, I guess, in fictional worlds. But again, this is just demonstrating how to use these assets and not to artistically make this perfect. That is not my goal here, okay? Just showing you how to use these assets to create a scene, okay? Actually, I'm gonna make this go into, yeah, perfect. We're gonna make this, pathway go into this hole kind of that's good enough okay and then so that transition is kind of weird so we might need to rotate this push it back just so there's like it's, it's not actually attached to it okay so it's something maybe like that and then we'll grab this big guy move him in the back kind of like this all right perfect all right so we can still see some of these things in the background these what i'm calling the mountains all, all i'm gonna need to do is i'm just gonna grab some of these things okay just because they seem a little bit off i'm just gonna change the material so they kind of have that there we go look this is me being quick i'm just changing the color so it doesn't look off but i mean it kind of matches this color over here and now i'm just going to start sprinkling some of these things over Fast forward, I've added all the assets I wanted them from the Quixel Asset Manager, and I've surrounded this metal futuristic object by a bunch of rocks. It's really stupid to be honest, but it is what it is. The purpose is to show you, you know, how you compile a scene 
purely by using the 3D assets from the Quixel Megascans library using Bridge. And uh, what I'm going to do here now is just add one more object if I go to Bridge and I just go ahead and search electric box. Um, there is this electric box. You can go ahead and just add it. I've already added it. So I'm going to go back to my file, Megascans, 3D assets, electric box. I'm just going to drag this forward just so I have some, I don't know, human scaled object. Move this over. Uh, the purpose of showing you this is that it doesn't need to be landscapes. It could just be, you know, there's all types of things you can add. But just to show you that there are a bunch of other objects, you know, if I just go ahead and type street for example street there's all types of things that you can add into your scene so i just wanted to show you that um go back to electric box thing download yep add i don't even know what it's called uh i think it's this thing yeah move this it's really tiny so just go ahead and scale it up if you'd like there we go this thing's a bit too big honestly so i go ahead and scale this down so all I did here is just change it from default to cinematic viewport just to make it look slightly different. It's, it's a little bit better. What you want to go ahead and do later is add a cinematic camera actor. You don't want to do what I'm doing here. Uh, this is just for like preview mode. And I'm just going to change the lighting slightly. Select this object. I don't know why. And I'm just going to change the lighting just to show you the quality you can get relatively quickly just by creating a scene with these bridge assets. So yeah, there you have it. That's it, pretty simple. Um, just to zoom out, just to show you what I created, it's not organized whatsoever. I mean, if, if you were to actually like play a game here, you'd have to limit the area that you're in just to kind of keep you in the zone. Again, there's a range from here to here that I'm modeling for, and that's that, okay? All right, what I realized is I forgot to show you how to add the plans from the Megascans library. So if I come in here, I downloaded these guys. If I come back to one, 3D plans, you'll notice that I have some of these plants right here and how you'd use that is you have to come up here from selection mode go to foliage and you'll notice that these things have been added in if you don't have them added in just go ahead and grab them and just drag them in doing that or you could just go ahead and add foliage right here and you'll show you your selection that you've downloaded okay anyway i'm just gonna grab all these and just gonna click select you have a brush size okay you have a paint density and then if you come down below as long as you have things selected you will see that there's settings over here that you could change shrink the brush size so it's not obnoxious see what that looks like. Okay, so that's really large. Okay, so maybe not the greatest. And right now it's just adding the shader, so that's why it kind of looked weird. So that looks about right, but it seems really, really big. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. And usually what I do is I like to put it next to me. So if I'm like setting up a camera, I'll have some like bushes or grass or whatever to the side. This is kind of big. I'm gonna go ahead and change the max scale. Okay, so scale X, look, I'm gonna randomly just change this down to like 0.4, what that does. Did it shrink it? I have no idea. We'll go ahead and increase this up to one and see if that makes a difference. Uh, it sure does, I think. Let's be obnoxious about it and see what that does. Yep, that definitely is the thing that changes the size of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this kind of small. Let's keep it like this. You can go ahead and add these things as you like. Just wanna show you how you'd remove it. Uh, you can just come up here to erase as simply as I added with my brush, I can remove with my brush. So uh, simple enough there. Now, if you wanna add decals, you know, you simply come up to decals and I'm just gonna click something obnoxious as heck. Oh, I like this guy, this squiggly dude. Yeah, graffiti tag. Just go ahead and download this and we'll go ahead and add. Okay, we'll add the squiggly guy. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the squiggly guy and I'm just gonna move it over here. Now you can see this is kind of strange. It does not look like my squiggly dude. Um, and this might be hard to do with something like a rock surface because it really it probably makes more sense with a flat surface. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place it in there and you'll notice that there is a graffiti tag right here, right on the outliner. And I'm just gonna click R to make it smaller just so I can comprehend the perimeter of this thing. And so what you need to do is you need to kind of find the right rotation. So I'm gonna rotate this thing. Okay, oh, there we go, we got it. So you just gotta find the right rotation. And, and because it's on a rock, it's very, very, very difficult to control. So go ahead and remove this guy over here. You'll see that because it's a flat surface, it's projecting it flat, uh, meaning it's projecting it on a horizontal surface. If I try to put it on the vertical, it's not gonna work. What you need to do in this case is you need to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna move this back and you'll notice that the character actually is. I'm not doing justice to this decal thing. Here, you know what? Uh, I'll do you a favor, copy this. I'm just gonna rotate this 90 degrees and then I'll grab this object again. You'll see that he's flat, okay? And then I'm gonna need to rotate. So rotate this guy up like 90 degrees, move him back and you'll notice that he is right here. Okay, so that's how that works on a flat surface.
Okay, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a rotational game here. So if I come back here, download, I don't know, some graffiti, do this again uh, a bit better. So I think I need to grab this thing, push it here again. You'll see that it's not working. Here it works fine because it's a horizontal surface. So I'll just plop it here for a second. Rotate this about 90-ish degrees. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees around here. And now I'll just move it. And that's how it shows up on my surface, uh, my vertical surface. Again, trying to do it on the rock is very difficult. Uh, as I've shown you. Anyway, that's how you add decals if you were interested. I, I know this is very obnoxious, but you know, just wanted to show you that. Future videos, I'll show you how to do this a little bit more procedurally to create at least the ground scene because it, it's kind of annoying to add these and copy paste it manually. There's a much, much quicker way of doing that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you have questions, please leave it in the comments sections below. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.